I hope some of you have watched the movie Amazonia. The film was launched in 2013 and was directed by a French director. Amazonia fills a space halfway in between a walk of friction and a wildlife documentary. The protagonist of the movie is Sai, a Capturian monkey born and raised in captivity. The movie takes a turn when this monkey finds himself alone and lost in the wilderness of Amazon jungle after a plane crash. The Sai is now exposed to a new set of challenges. The freedom, the impenetrable green and the ferocious predators like crocodiles, boas, jaguars, snakes, etc. are all around himself. Sai's only chance of survival is to seek out his own kind and join the Capturian community. The movie displays an extraordinary journey into the heart of a dark, dense forest, a region that very few people have explored. It's a perfect family movie, so if you haven't watched it, I recommend you to watch it as soon as possible. Now let us quickly take a tour of the place on which the movie Amazonia is based. Well, in this video, we can see that this place is densely covered with trees and here it rains almost every day. So, this place is extremely hot and humid. And in this place, one can find a wide variety of species than anywhere else in the world. Well, let me tell you that we have arrived at a rainforest. So, now let us find out where in the world rainforests are found. Well, rainforests are found on either sides of the equator and between both the tropics, that is Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn. So, rainforests exist in the tropical region across the equator and therefore, rainforests are also known as equatorial rainforests since it exists very close to the equator. Now, another name for equatorial rainforest is tropical evergreen forest. Now, why tropical evergreen forest? This is because as we can see in this map, the rainforest exists between both the tropics in the tropical belt and therefore, these rainforests are known as tropical evergreen forest. Now, why they are known as evergreen forest will be discussed later on. Now, as we can see in this map, the rainforest exists across three main continents that is South America, Africa and Asia. Now, these rainforests are known by different names. For instance, they are known as Amazon rainforest in South America and they are known as Congo rainforest in Africa. Now, these rainforests also exist in several island countries of Southeast Asia and hence they are known as Southeast Asian rainforests in this part of Asia. Now, among all these rainforests, can you name the largest one? Well, the Amazon rainforest that exists in South America is the largest rainforest in the world. This rainforest covers an approximate area of 6 million square kilometers and since this covers a huge area, therefore these rainforest is also referred to as lungs of the world or lungs of our mother earth. This is because since this rainforest is a huge one, therefore it absorbs a large amount of carbon dioxide and releases tons of fresh oxygen into the air. Thus, it acts like an important respiratory organ that is lungs of our mother earth and therefore Amazon rainforest is also referred to as the lungs of our earth because of its vast extensive size. Now, as the name suggests, these rainforests are highly influenced by the amount of rainfall and climatic conditions prevailing in this region. So, now let us discuss about the climatic conditions of these rainforests. Well, this chart shows the climatic conditions that is temperature and precipitation conditions of the equatorial region where the rainforest exists. And here we can see that this region experiences a very high temperature throughout the year. 
that is throughout the average temperature ranges between 31 to 32 degree Celsius. Also, we can find that there is minimum variation in day and night temperatures and this condition prevails round the year. Now, another important feature of this region is that it receives high amount of rainfall throughout the year. And due to this, the forests found in the equatorial region are also known as rainforest because it grows in a region that experiences excessive amount of rainfall throughout the year. In fact, you will be surprised to know that in this region it rains almost every day at around 4 pm in the evening and therefore the rain experienced by this place is also known as 4 o'clock shower. Now based on the temperature and precipitation condition, we can infer that the equatorial region experiences warm and wet climate that is it has high temperature and it rains almost in every month of the year in fact in this region there is no winter season there is no month in the year when the temperature drops drastically and also none of the months of this year are dry thus equatorial region experiences hot and wet climate throughout the year now let us see what type of impact these climatic conditions have on the vegetation of this region. Well as we saw in the beginning of this lesson that the equatorial region is densely covered with trees and these trees are evergreen in nature that is if you look at the equatorial rainforest then you will find that they are always dark green in color. And why they appear to be dark green? This is because the trees found in equatorial region never shade their leaves all at once and therefore they appear to be green throughout the year. So evergreen means they are always green because they do not shed their leaves all at once. That is they are never bareheaded and they are always covered with dark green leaves and so these trees are known as evergreen trees. Now another important characteristic of these rainforests is that the trees found in this region grow very close to one another. So for this reason sunlight cannot penetrate deeper into the forest. Another feature of the trees is that they form huge canopies. That is the trees have spread out branches at the top in order to absorb maximum sunlight. Now these huge canopies further restricts the entry of sunlight into the forest. As a result the forest floor remains damp and moist. And in this forest floor, we can find shrubs, bushes, etc. growing here. Now, since the amount of sunlight entering into the forest is very restricted, so the trees grow to very tall heights in order to absorb maximum sunlight. Now, in this quest, there are some trees that acquire extremely tall heights, while can grow to such tall heights and there are in fact some trees that have shorter heights and we can also find shrubs and bushes at the forest floor. Thus in the equatorial region we can find trees of varying heights. Some are very tall and some are short. So based on the differences in the heights of trees, the vegetation found in the equatorial region can be segregated or differentiated into four distinct layers. The trees that have extremely tall heights approximately 40 to 50 meters comprise of the emergent layer. Following the emergent layer, we have the canopy layer. This canopy layer comprises of trees that form huge canopies that is they have spread out branches at the top. Now the trees that fall in the second layer that is the canopy layer grow to a height of 25 to 30 meter approximately. 
Next, we have the understory layer. This layer comprises of trees that have shorter heights, approximately 20 to 50 meter. So, these trees growing below the canopy layer form the understory layer. And finally, at the ground level, we have shrubs, ferns and bushes growing. And this layer is known as the forest floor. In this layer, the trees have minimum heights approximately 10 to 15 meter. And these trees can tolerate shade and therefore they grow on damp, moist forest floor. So here we find that the vegetation found in the equatorial region can be segregated into four distinct layers. They are emergent layer, canopy layer, understory layer and finally at the ground level we have the forest floor layer. So we found that the equatorial region are densely covered with trees that are evergreen in nature. That is, these trees do not shed their leaves all at once. And also, the trees growing in this region vary in heights. And on the basis of this, the vegetation can be segregated into four layers. Now that we have understood different characteristics of equatorial rainforest, let us now identify some of the trees growing in this forest. Many important hardwood trees are found in the tropical rainforest or equatorial rainforest and these trees have high economic value. Well, some of these trees are rubber, cinchona, mahogany and rosewood. So, these are some of the important valuable hardwood trees that are found in the equatorial rainforest. Now, the rubber plant found in this forest has high economic value. The sap which is known as latex obtained from the rubber plant is used for making rubber. Now, the rubber is further utilized for making tires, shoes, waterproof clothes etc. Next, we have a valuable medicinal plant that is cinchona plant. The bark of cinchona plant is utilized for making quinine. Which is a medicine used for treating malaria. And finally, these trees that is mahogany and rosewood are utilized for obtaining timber. Now, although these valuable hardwood trees are found in the equatorial rainforest in abundance, but they cannot be extracted very easily. Do you know why? The reason is that although a wide variety of trees are found here, but the trees occur very close to one another. That is, they do not occur in pure stand rather they occur in mixed stand which means that different varieties of trees are found in one place or a single variety of plant species do not grow together and therefore it becomes very difficult to identify a single variety of plant species and for this reason these rainforests cannot be exploited very easily and thus the equatorial rainforests are not commercially important because a single variety of plant species cannot be found here or identified very easily and therefore they cannot be exploited easily. So although many hardwood trees are found in the equatorial rainforest but they are commercially unimportant because the trees occur in mixed stand. Now, before proceeding with our lesson, let us see if we can answer this. Why are evergreen rainforests commercially unimportant? And the options are because they occur in mixed stand, they are found in the tropical region, they shed their leaves or because they occur in pure stand. Now, which of these options do you think is the correct one? Well, the correct option is evergreen rainforests are commercially unimportant because they occur in mixed stand. That is, a wide variety of plant species grow together. So, the correct option is they occur in mixed stand. Now, the tropical evergreen forests are not only rich in flora, but they also has a rich variety of fauna or wildlife. 
well some of the animals that reside in the dark dense evergreen forest are monkey gorilla macaws jaguar anaconda and sloth now if you can remember we read about shine at the beginning of this video now shine is a capuchinian monkey and this is a picture of a capuchinian monkey also one of the largest and deadliest snakes in the world that is the anaconda are found in the dark dense evergreen forest so we can find that the evergreen forests are rich in wildlife apart from these animals many other animals are also found in this forest now we shall discuss about another type of forest that are found in the tropical belt well you must have noticed that many furnitures in our room like chairs tables cabinets etc are made up of wood now wood or timber is a plant product now can you name some trees from which timber is obtained well timber is obtained from some important hardwood trees like teak and sal so teak and sal are some important hardwood trees that provides us with timber now as its name suggests these trees are hardwood that is they are quite hard and compact and therefore they are durable so because of this reason these trees are utilized for obtaining timber now do you know where these hardwood trees grow well these hardwood trees are found in the deciduous forests of the tropical region so this map shows the location of tropical deciduous forest and here we find that these deciduous forests grow on either sides of the equator and between both the tropics that is tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn to be more precise these forests are found between tropic of cancer and the equator in the northern hemisphere and between tropic of capricorn and the equator in the southern hemisphere now let us discuss about the important characteristics of deciduous forest now in this video we can see leaves falling off the trees now this is an important characteristic of deciduous trees that is they shed their leaves at particular point of the year especially before the onset of dry season well the deciduous trees shed their leaves before the onset of dry season because the deciduous trees are found in a region which experiences great seasonal variations now this chart displays the temperature and precipitation conditions of the region where deciduous forests are found and here we find that this region experiences three distinct seasons summer monsoon and winter and also the heavy rainfall is restricted to only a few months of the year that is the monsoon season and it remains almost dry for rest of the year since rainfall is restricted to only a few months of the year therefore the deciduous trees found in this region shed all their leaves before the onset of dry season in order to prevent loss of water through transpiration which is carried on by leaves in other words so that the leaves do not lose much of the water through transpiration therefore they shed all their leaves during dry season now since the trees shed their leaves at particular point of the year therefore they are known as deciduous trees now the word deciduous originates from a latin word decidas which means to fall off or fall down so because these leaves shed their leaves before the onset of dry season so they are also known as deciduous trees now let us identify some of the trees that are found here well as discussed previously teak and sal are some of the important hardwood trees that are found in the deciduous forests of tropical region 
well apart from them some other important trees that are found in these forests are bamboo neem in fact bamboo and neem just like teak and sal bamboo and neem also has high economic value now unlike the equatorial rainforest the deciduous forest occur in pure stand that is a particular variety of plant species grow together and therefore it is very easy to identify a particular plant species and therefore the deciduous forests are easily exploited so they are commercially very important because you can easily identify a particular plant species say teak sal etc and you can obtain timber from it very easily so here we learn that deciduous forest occur in pure stand so they are commercially very important now the deciduous forest are rich in wildlife some of the animals that are found in the tropical deciduous forest are tiger elephants langurs and lion now apart from them some other animals are also found in these tropical deciduous forest so in today's lesson we discuss about two types of forests that are found in the tropical region firstly we have the tropical evergreen forest these tropical evergreen forest as we can see here is situated very close to the equator and for this reason they are also known as equatorial rain forest now if we move away from the equator towards both the poles then we have the tropical deciduous forest and these deciduous forests are situated in both the hemispheres in the northern hemisphere it's situated between the tropic of cancer and the equator and in the southern hemisphere it is situated between the equator and the tropic of capricorn so the tropical evergreen forest are found in the equatorial belt while the tropical deciduous forest are found between the equator and both the tropics then we also discussed about some of the important characteristics of tropical evergreen forest the tropical evergreen forests are densely covered with trees and these trees do not shed their leaves at once and therefore they are known as evergreen forest because they always appear to be green now unlike the evergreen forest the deciduous forest shed all their leaves at particular point of the year now also a wide variety of trees are found in the evergreen forest but they are commercially unimportant because the evergreen forest occur in mixed stand conversely the deciduous forest occur in pure stand so the deciduous forest are commercially very important and then we also discuss about some of the fauna and wildlife that are found in these forests so this brings us to the end of today's discussion on tropical forest don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon you can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the delta step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to our 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus master each topic with our adaptive practice technology get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests get all your doubt resolved instantly learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy but it's rewarding too so register for free now